My name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to configure Quarkus to work behind a reverse proxy with the example of a Kubernetes and Istio cluster. What that means is that we will get some user facing URLs where the application can create and generate these URLs for you depending on what you would like to offer via HTTP and Quarkus can use some information that the original HTTP request contains. So we will see what all of that means. What I have is I have my Quarkus uh, playground application that basically represents a coffee shop application where we can have some coffee orders and things like that. So with this I can show you a JAXRS resource, coffee, uh, coffee's resource, for which we can for example create some coffee and return this and so on and so forth. So the application there is quite straightforward. What I can show you just um, to get um, a picture, I can say, well, for example, I would like to build my application and then run it using this Quarkus run jar. And then what I can do, I can say, well, for example, give me the coffees that this application contains. So I can ask for the coffees that is actually a JSON array. And then I can say, well, please create some new coffees. For example, by posting something there to the application with a JSON type. So this is quite straightforward, which we can see in the code. For example, I can say, well, please post an order here. Then we say, well, two of four, no content. And then we have hopefully two of these coffees in the system, which is the case here. So two espressos. But then the question is, okay, can we actually provide some URL in a somewhat hypermedia fashion? So for example, to provide, well, actually, where can I get this um, espresso here? And then implicitly I could specify, well, for example, take this URL slash and then the ID, something like this, which works, but obviously the backend should emit this URL. So my backend should actually tell us when we create something, hey, by the way, the, uh, the coffee order you will find here. So this works in Quarkus uh, quite straightforward. Lee, so for example, if I start the development mode and if I um, check this out, how to build this, this is actually contained in the JAX REST standard. And you've probably have seen me uh, showing that before. I can um, inject using at context such a URI info type, which comes from JAXRS, that I can use to create some, well, information for URI. So for example, I can say URI info dot and then get some URI builder and then use some information here. So for example, what I can say, get base URI builder and say path. And then, well, that's quite interesting. I can, for example, append a path here, or I use this information via reflection that is provided in these annotations. For example, I can say, point to this class and then read the value of this annotation. So that works as well, depends on what you would uh, prefer here. So for example, I can say, take the path of this class, how it is annotated, and then take the path of this coffee's um, resource of this method class with the method name that should be exactly this one here. So that's the method for getting a single coffee order. For example, get coffee like this and then build it with some argument and the argument should be well the UUID of the order, which I don't have yet. So my add coffee method, my business method should return this. So usually when you save it to a database, then you get uh, either the updated entity or the ID or something like this. In our case, that's a little bit simpler. We just generate a UUID and store it in memory, but that works as well. We can say return the coffee.id, which is a UUID. And then we return this from that method. And then we say, well, now I would like to have this UUID and then build this URI. That's my URI of the coffee that I just created. And then I want to return this also from my JAXRS um, method. So I could say JAXRS response, for example, created. So the 201 created status with the URI and then built everything. And of course, return the response here in my method. And that's gonna be it. Well, please create a new coffee. And there we go. Now we see that this URL works. So now I could say, okay, this already works, you know, done, done, thanks for watching. But that is not enough if we're in an environment, in a production environment, especially behind a reverse proxy or in a Kubernetes um, environment that basically does the same, where we would need to configure the actual user facing domain 
port if that's different and especially also the protocol. So it might be HTTPS for SSL and so on and so forth. So that's quite interesting because it might differ how you actually um, go to your application. So for example, if we have our um, application somewhere here, application running, well, not directly, but where we get the user facing um, HTTP request that doesn't go to the application here, something like this but where instead we have some sort of reverse proxy that then itself sends a different um, HTTP request to the application. And now that's quite interesting because the uh, reverse proxy might be invoked with some um, domain, for example, using HTTPS, something like this. And then the application might actually be called with some internal name. Uh, for example, in Kubernetes, we quite often use this um, Kubernetes internal DNS resolution. I might have coffee shop 8080, something like this. It might be an HTTP request, something like that, where this is then just the case that, well, that differs. And now that's quite interesting to see. So the first request is just different from the domain, um, the host name, the protocol, port, maybe, depends. And now how, well, what to do with that or how to use this. So the good news is for that Quarkus has some functionality here. So we can have a look at the uh, Quarkus guide for the HTTP reference and see, okay, there is a possibility actually to, um, well, configure this. And it's quite interesting that we say forwarded. There we go, running behind a reverse proxy where we can configure this. So that's then what actually, well, sets a, a different URI or sets a different request um, pattern here if our proxy sends us this information. So that's quite interesting. But at first, let's have a look at what the problem is if we actually run this in an environment where it sits behind a reverse proxy. So for example, I would like to deploy this to a Kubernetes uh, cluster real quick. I have a Kubernetes cluster running locally that is a Minikube cluster that uses Minikube with uh, Minikube add-ons, something on the list, I think, with uh, specific add-ons that we use, especially I have um, Istio installed and this um, Metal LB, this load balancer installed so that I actually can have an IP address for a load balancing service so I can have something approximating um, a DNS lookup locally. And what I can do, let's do this real quick. First of all, in order to run this in a Kubernetes environment, I have to containerize it. So I use a Docker file here that I can, well, build this to um, a Docker um, image. So let's do this. I can say, for example, please build this first of all into my application again using Maven and then do something like a Docker build. Now I use my own um, Docker re um, registry with so just some temporary name. Why? Because I want to provide it to the registry so that Kubernetes, my cluster, can uh, download it again. So I can say, well, please just build and push this image to my repository. And then I can actually deploy this to my Kubernetes setup. Let's do this real quick. What do I need for that? Well, of course, I need these Kubernetes YAML definitions, right? So for this, we will see that what I need is first of all a definition for my coffee shop. This would be in a Kubernetes world, a deployment um, coffee shop. That's how I now want to call it. The image tag is temp like this. And then I need a Kubernetes service. Typically I call this also not Quarkus playground, but coffee shop. So that's that. Then I have a service and a deployment using one pod, one replica here that will deploy my application. So that runs already. And in my setup, I will use Istio for Istio routing. So in this case, what I would do, I will create, no, I wanted to actually rename that, that should reside. Typically I do this in a directory. Let's call this deployment, then put this there. And then in the deployment folder, or you would use a Helm chart or something similar. I can create a routing.yaml or istio routing or however you want to call that. So for example, I say um, use a virtual service that I can call coffee shop. Then typically a destination rule. Um, as a good practice. And then also I create another 
gateway, which is the interesting bit that we can configure use it, uh, for a specific domain. So if I say um, gateway, it should be something like coffee shop gateway, then we can say, well, just please configure that. So in the default way, this should be quite straightforward because we can say, well, just map everything in our case with all of the IP addresses. So here host a wildcard port 80 HTTP port to my application. That means we say for the routing perspective, uh, we use the same wildcard from the gateway that is called coffee shop gateway. And then it will be routed to my application. So basically in the Istio world, that means on a gateway, I have an incoming HTTP request using some specific uh, IP address. We will see this in a second. I use the wildcard here using HTTP port 80 and that will be forwarded uh, once it arrives at, um, at this gateway to my application. Okay, so let's try this out. I will just go and say, well, kubectl uh, apply everything in this directory. Now I have hopefully a pod with my application. I have um, a deployment, a virtual service and all of that stuff that basically maps the whole thing there. Kubectl get gateways here as well. And then if I did um, everything correctly, I can use my load balancer of my Istio system. So this is now, of course, how my setup works with my IP address in a cloud environment. Typically you would, well, obviously use the IP address of your uh, cluster provided by the cloud or some domain. Where I can say, well, curl, um, this one uh, basically should be port 80. Let's have a look. Yes, not found, that should be then um, slash coffees, I think, and that is HTTP 200. Okay, okay, great. So this already works. Uh, we can say post my JSON here, type espresso, give me the HTTP headers, and then we say, okay, now this should work. This looks actually good, but the fact that it works is more like a coincidence. Why? Well, because the IP address will then just be taken from the HTTP um, request from the original one, but it might not be the case if we use a different host and especially the protocol. So this is something that you need to test in your setup if you construct the URLs in your application using this Quarkus mechanism that we've seen, if that, it's, uh, then it still works. So for this, I will use a different example now that just showcases this. So first of all, I would like to change um, the domain. So instead of uh, using this wildcard IP address, I say, well, for example, you use something like coffee.example.local. Uh -huh. So that's a thing. And then please map this host into my application. I can just change that, right? So then I can say, well, deployment, please apply this again. And now, well, obviously, if I would li uh, like to apply this, so coffee example local and say not lol, <laughs> local, then it obviously doesn't work because there is no uh, DNS uh, resolution for my local IP address, obviously. So the one that you've just uh, seen before uh, with this IP address that I had here. So what I can do in curl actually for testing purposes, I can say, well, dash dash resolve, I can manually set this up here for just this domain and then um, the port. So it would be hostname colon port colon and then the IP address, which in my case uh, would be this one should be 59105 if I remember correctly. And then this actually works. So this is also an interesting tip for testing purposes. If you have not yet configured your DNS or your setup like that, then you know this will work in that uh, perspective. Or what you can also do, um, just have a look at your uh, etc hosts uh, file on Linux, and then you can set up while well, this table lookup for host names just for uh, local testing purposes. But it's also can be a little bit dangerous because if you forget about them, you can basically well re rewind all of the um, domains locally. Really good for testing purposes, but don't forget about them to to reset them. Um, so this is just a possibility to te uh, to test it. Okay. Long story short, let's have a look at my post scenario here type espresso okay interesting this still works it does use um, the host here out of the box so that works 
But well, let's also now get one step further and see if still um, the protocol uh, still works and the uh, port if we use HTTPS, for example. So now just for you know the sake of the example, I can take this URL and then point to it and say, well, of course I need to resolve it again and so on and so forth. So that was that. Using the resolution here without the post, so just the get request on this and then it works, of course, if I use the proper resolution. But now let's try the same using HTTPS. For that purpose, um, what I have, I created some um, local certificate just for local host for actually this domain. So that's quite um, straightforward. You can have a look at uh, just some SSL uh, requests that I can say, well, just make a request for some particular um, domain. In my case, that's this domain plus or is it a wildcard, what I created? And then what I can do, you can say, well, please now provide this. How that works, of course, depends on your setup, like however you set up your reverse proxy. Now what happens actually, or what needs to happen is the following, that you use your reverse proxy, that might be my Istio proxy, or more precisely the gateway um, Istio instance in my cluster, or it might be something like an Nginx or whatever have you, to configure it with the appropriate, well, certificates, of course, and then to forward it to my application. So then the proxy has, well, the um, valid certificates and all of that set up, for example, for my coffee example local with HTTPS and a valid certificate, and then it would forward to my application. So I've done that in my cluster. So I've created um, these certificates um, into my Minikube instance so that my uh, gateway can actually use them. How this works is as follows that in my gateway, I say instead of this server configuration with port 80, I can say, well, actually for TLS, just have a redirect to also not just port 80, but port 443 and HTTPS. And then for the TLS configuration, I need to provide um, the simple mode, you can have different uh, mode setups and how you can do this and the configuration for the certificates, which uh, looks like follows that, well, this needs to be provided at the cluster setup. Usually that's this path, uh, etc Istio, and then some sort of directory where these um, uh, certificates are mounted into it. In uh, Kubernetes Istio setup that works by um, mounting a so-called secret into it. So these um, certificates are typically being provided if some uh, with some secrets. Let's have a look at that in this Istio system um, namespace. There is some Istio ingress gateway certificates there and then they will be mapped and mounted into this directory and then my gateway actually can use them. So of course that's an uh, administration config for well whatever uh, wildcard certificates you need. And now I can actually change this and use that. Let's have a look how this works. So I again apply my configuration. And now if I did everything correctly, then I should actually well be able to use it. Also, I quickly want to change my host file to just add this entry with the appropriate copy example local with the appropriate IP address and domain name so that I don't have to have this resolution uh, each and every time in my resolve curl uh, command. And now I can um, go and say, well, curl actually provide this now with that URL without resolve. And then it will tell me first of all, okay, with HTTPS, uh, sorry, with HTTP and 80, that would be 301, now a redirect to HTTPS. Okay, fair enough, let's try this out. Then as the next thing it says, well, you have a self-assigned certificate, so I can add, or I have to add dash dash insecure or minus K. And now you see, okay, interesting, that works. So it works now using HTTPS. Now, obviously, it would, if it were a valid certificate or if I use my own CA or something like this, then I don't have to provide this parameter, but we can ignore this. And now what it does, it provides that information. Okay. But of course, the interesting part is um, the post of providing again the type espresso of creating a new espresso order. And what it says now is, oh, you see, this does not quite work because it didn't add the HTTPS. 
So if I now would say, well, use this please, then it says, well, it kind of works because it has a redirect and I follow the redirect again, but that's obviously not what I want. Of course, I would like my application to provide the proper link immediately. So then how this, uh, how this works is now I need to do something in my application. So for example, I would need to go to my code and say, well, how do you create um, this request here? So now this is something that gets a little bit more complicated because then we need to check for different conditions like if my request has some extra header information. But luckily Quarka solves something here for us. So what I can do, if we have a look at the guides again, I can add some properties for which then Quarkus will um, automatically take these HTTP headers into account. So this is how almost all of the re reverse proxies work or how they should work usually is that once the um, original user request arrives at the reverse proxy, then obviously the request was sent for a different host, a different uh, port typically, IP address and all of that. And then this information might be preserved and sent to the backend in specific HTTP headers. And these are the standard or de facto standard headers that also are supported by Quarkus, which is also being used from, depending on your setup, in my case, Kubernetes with Istio. So these um, headers, especially, I think it's the protocol host and port that is um, being used for me. So the protocol is the one that is now still missing because that is HTTP now instead of HTTPS, what it should be. But luckily what we can do, we can use some properties here to set this up in Quarkus. So in my Quarkus application, I go to my properties and say, well, for the proxy, I would say, well, um, please, uh, first of all, allow the proxy address forwarding. So set this to true. And then it depends what you actually need. So in my case, I would need these two. So you can have a look at that. So either the um, de facto header that is the forwarded header will be considered or well, these forwarded, these X forwarded headers, which is what I need. So I will actually add these two uh, parameters to say forwarded, um, well, host and, uh, and prefix and all of, the, um, all of them. So then they will be taken into account. So let's try this out if this actually uh, solves our problem. I hope so. If not, then what we would need to do, this would be much, much more work. And this is typically what you would have to do if you're not using Quarkus, but some other um, application server that then you say, well, take this URI info, but also have a look at the current HTTP request. You can actually see the information there and read the headers yourself. And then you need to take that into account and say, well, if the header is set, then which host name should be taken, which protocol, which port, and so on and so forth. But luckily, we can quite easily configure and use that using these properties in Quarkus. So now what I have to do, I basically have to rebuild my application and say, okay, now, of course, I rebuild this in a new way. And now do the Docker build once again. I just override the same tag. That's just fine for testing purposes. Push this again. And now what I can do, well, I can trigger a new deployment and things like that, but I always have the image pool configured. So what I now just do, because just to be evil, I delete the pod and then quite quickly the deployment and the um, replica set will create a new one. And this is now this new version that uses my updated image actually, because I always have the image um, to be pulled. And once that is up and running, I can uh, create this and try this one more time. So I say, okay, for this curl request, HTTPS, let's try this out. Yes, certificate, okay, great. And now try the post again, like this. And now we see, great, now this works using the same information that the user sent. So the user facing URL using HTTPS and the proper domain. Well, of course, without a port, so that would just use the default port 443. And then I can just use the same URL to access my application and then just to follow this hypermedia link. So this is how you can set up these links and use them um, in Quarkus for Quarkus applications that run behind a reverse proxy, especially for a Kubernetes and Istio environment, which is what I showed you. I will provide some more resources how and where to get this code, also how to set up your Minikube cluster, 
for your local uh, setup if you would like to test this. And also if you found this interesting, you might uh, want to check out a course that I have on effective uh, Quarkus usage, link down below. And if you found this helpful, I would really appreciate a like and thanks a lot for watching. Bye.